the nerves start. Yeah. <laughs> right. Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we are doing our 10K Q&A. Got a bit of a ring to that, on it? 10K Q&A. Uh, we've reached 10,000 subscribers and it seems to be a bit of a thing that everybody that gets to that point does a Q&A, so we just thought we'd do that. Obviously, it's not a lot of subscribers compared to the big boys, but we've had lots of support, lots of really kind, nice, generous comments encouraging us to keep going. YouTube is something that I've put off doing for years and years, to be honest, and I finally plucked up the courage to do it. And so far, so good. Before we start the questions, just a quick thanks to a few people who encouraged me to get it going. Matt at High Peak Autos, I'm sure a lot of you know that Matt recommends us a lot to people in his videos. Since we started the channel, he had us on his channel, which obviously really boosted our subscribers up. So thanks for that, Matt. Els Auto Care YouTube channel. I've contacted him when I still had ideas about a YouTube channel because he had one and he spent a lot of time talking to me about it and again, encouraging me. And I, I don't even know him. Um, so thanks, Ellis, for that. Appreciate that, mate. Curbside Mobile Mechanics YouTube channel, again, don't know uh, Kirby at all, only through messaging on social media and he gave me loads of advice and encouragement to get it going. Toolbox Cleaning Company has given us loads of support from day one of starting the channel. We do actually use their products and have used them for years. Basically, uh, is it okay to use your products in the videos because we use them anyway? And he said, yeah, um, I'll give you viewers some discount which has been really good so yeah the, everyone's been dead supportive and we've reached 10k in six months that's six months so we put a post out on youtube saying thanks to everyone have you got any questions oh we also did it on instagram as well we're not going to answer all of them we'll pick the best ones out i think i'll start with the instagram ones as soon as I decided to do a QA, and a I thought I'm just going to get inundated with people wanting online diagnosis of cars. So we're going to try and avoid them questions because that's not really what it was for. I probably should have been more specific. But anyway, first question. Thoughts, common issues on a 124 500e? Do a video if you can. E500 124s are a really rare car to begin with. Should I have one in and I had time at the time of fixing it then maybe i could do a video i have worked on a, a few of them i've prepared a few to go abroad they're all left on drive so i've been quite lucky to actually even work and drive a 124 e500 would i have one yes common issues distributor caps are a nightmare for getting condensation in them and make give them a misfire that is probably the worst thing about that engine other than that i'd, I'd definitely have one I have a C200 205 on cold start. <laughs> Outside temperature is below five degrees. I can smell petrol. That's not really what the Q&A was for. Um, sounds like you've got a fuel leak, doesn't it? <laughs> you kind of answered your own question. Yeah, it sounds like you've got a fuel leak, mate. C200 205, what's that? 270 engine. Has a fuel pipe at the back of the engine that goes down the back of the engine. There's a modified pipe, change the clamps at the same time. That's what it will be. It only smells when it's cold. I'm going to try and avoid these. Do you like BMW M cars? If so, which ones are your favorite and what do you like about them? Well, yeah, I do like BMWs. I have owned a few BMWs. In fact, my first German car was a BMW. If so, which ones are your favorite? It's just got to be like E36 M3s, E46 M3s old E30 M3s, I think they're left on drive only. I don't know too much about BMWs, so I'm sure somebody will go, oh no, you can get that in a right and drive. M3s, M5s, proper cars. Can you service my Aldi? No. Question from Mike. Hi Sam, what's the best value, high performance Mercedes, AMG and why? 211 E55 AMG. Five and a half litre, supercharged engine, 500 brake horsepower, get one for 10 or 12 grand, 
what's not to like about that. Uh, granted, the 20 years old, but that is really good power for that age of vehicle. Uh, engine's really reliable. For 10, 12 grand, can you get 500 brake horsepower off anywhere else? I doubt it. That would be my pick there. That's off Mike. Question off Biz. Biz 100, how long did it take to become a really good MB technician? It's a good question. Now I know that Biz is a Mercedes mechanic trainee and works at a Mercedes specialist. So I get why he's asking this question. I've got a cold, excuse me, sniffling. I would say to be a good mechanic, to be able to tackle most jobs on your own, I'd say 10 years. And when I say you can tackle any job, I mean mechanical fitting job, on and off jobs. To be into diagnostics, testing, all the complicated stuff, 10 years plus. But with this job, you never stop learning. Just because we're a Mercedes specialist doesn't mean we know everything. There's always new technology coming out. There's always new cars coming out. We're always experiencing new faults, even on older cars that we've not experienced before. So it never stops, it never stops. But I'd say good solid 10 years, you would be very confident to work on pretty much anything and remove and fit anything on any vehicle. This is from The Man Can't. If money was no object and you could own any legal vehicle, what would be your go-to choice? Money, no object. If I had loads of money, I'd probably have a really good car collection of new and old stuff. Not even expensive stuff, some stuff. It could be like a two litre 190 that I picked up for a couple of grand. Uh, I would love a CLK 63 black edition. That would be money, no object car. I feel like you could get away with driving that because people think you're driving around in a, a CLK with a body kit on. I, I would like one of them. On my bucket list, I'd hope to own one before I die. <laughs> if anyone's got a cheap one that needs some work, that would be good for our channel, let me know. C63, does the exhaust need to come out to replace the prop shaft flexes? The answer is no. Let's move on. Is a facelift SL55 AMG 06 to 08 a safer buy than an early pre-facelift? Good question, they're all the same really. Would I pick a newer one with higher mileage over an older one with lesser mileage or vice versa? I think you just find a good one and buy it, enjoy yourself. You could say the later cars getting some of the newer modified parts on it, if they'd changed any parts in that time, I suppose. But find a good one, buy it, enjoy yourself. That's Instagram questions, how long's that been on? 12 minutes, God, should have got, a, I need a glass of water. <laughs> Jesus. <coughs> yeah, I need some of it. Dying, eh? Not rustling that, is it? No. Sound all right? Yeah, I've not heard anything yet. Thanks, mate. Not well, I've got a dry mouth as it is. Thanks, mate. Okay, you Merch coming soon. We'll, get, we'll buy these and put SPR on it. Yeah. Primark, huh? <laughs> Everyone who does these seems to do them in like nice backgrounds and nice lighting and everything. Look at that, I thought, that's all I can do. Nathan's very kindly donated his lunch hour to help me do this because we put this out, the question out about two, three weeks ago when we got 10,000 followers. We're now on nearly 13,000 subscribers. Um, so apologies that this has took so long. I've got my old chair, that's all knackered. And Nathan sat on a stool, that's knackered. Anyway, Faz6870, onto the YouTube questions. Just started watching your channel and it's really useful as a Mercedes owner. Which of these famous AMG engines is more reliable and why would you recommend buying them? M113, M156, M157. M113, hands down, is the most reliable. Um, if you're looking to get into AMGs, you're buying your first AMG and you're perhaps on a budget, your safe bet is always an M113. Uh, but they are getting a bit old now, but that's the most reliable out of those engines.
It's from Lance Graham. Great work. Found your channel through HPA, High Peak Autos, and thought I'd give it a go. Glad I did. As for the question, what would cause a two th oh. what would cause a 2009 204 200 to have slight vibration grumble at 2000 RPM, regardless if it's in P, N, or in gear? Note, all mounts have been changed. Well, I would have said engine mounts, but by you saying mounts have been changed, I'm guessing you mean engine mounts. Um, that would have been my guess. Um, I don't have any other guesses. Munich 7355. Apologies if I've not said that right. Great channel, love the videos. Quick question, what's your view on modern Mercedes compared to older Mercedes? I feel they are living off the name. Also, what's your view on Mercedes running a Renault engine? They don't build them like they used to. And everyone's disappointed that they don't. But I feel that's the same with anything. It could be like a telly. You know, you buy a new telly and it breaks after three years and everybody goes, oh, I had that old one 15 years. So I think it's just how the world is these days. Plus the technology, car manufacturers are forced to use so much recycled stuff, so there's, there's more plastic. And then people say, oh, the quality's not as good. Well, in a lot of cases, it's not allowed. But I know what you mean. Are they as good as the old stuff, 190s, 124s? No, they were like built like tanks. So it is a shame, but it's the way the world's going with most things, I think. What's my view on the Renault engine? It's not great, is it? But I think Renault wanted some kind of technology off Mercedes, so they'd give them whatever that was. Hopefully it was wiring, because <laughs> their wiring's shocking. And then Mercedes said, oh, well, in return, can we pinch your engine? A bit of that goes on. It saves people spending fortunes redesigning stuff. Yeah, they use a Renault engine in the little A-classes. Is it a bad engine? From my experience, it's been pretty reliable. Uh, yes, it's unusual for Mercedes to use a, an engine with a belt. The mile per gallon it produces is really good. But then again, is an A-class a proper Mercedes? It's kind of the budget end of the model, isn't it? So if I did quite a lot of miles and I needed an A-class with a diesel engine, would it put me off that it's a Renault engine? Probably not. Would I want a Renault engine in my C63? Definitely not. So they don't put the Renault engine in the better models like E-class, S-class. It's only in like the, the basic stuff. Um, and obviously the Mercedes sits on is, is it like a Renault Kangoo or something? So a bit of swapping and changing but it's not too bad. More questions of how to fix someone's car. Not much you can do about that. In fact, I replied. No, I've done a good deed there, I replied. So hopefully you got that reply. There's so many nice comments. There's more nice comments, people are saying well done and stuff, than questions, which is nice, I'm not complaining. Because when we first started, we got some quite bad comments and I thought, oh my God, what am I doing? I'm going to delete this channel. Bungle2312. I have a 2005 CLK. Well, we like a CLK. 220,000 miles. It's good going. As far as I know, the timing belt has never been replaced. When I asked my local mechanics, they said it is not necessary and this had a timing chain. Well, yes, it doesn't have a belt. They're correct, it does have a chain. No, there is not a service interval for it, unless you're having like a rattle on startup or anything like that. I wouldn't worry about it in that engine. Um, I've got down, you've got a two litre, 2.2 litre diesel. Um, you'll be fine. Great content, you've come, overcome early fears. Yes, I have. Well, I haven't, I still get scared to death every time. Uh, drive guy, what are your views on off-roading a 164 ml? What parts would you expect to break? I suppose it depends what boulder you smack into, doesn't it? I've already replaced the compressor. Well, that's a common one. Rear airbags, yep, common. Shocker, common. Offside strut, yep. And he's had oil cooler seals, yep, good man. I'm not a big off-road guy, so I wouldn't know. I don't think Mercedes MLs are quite up to off-road standards as, let's say, a Land Rover or a G-Wagon. But why not be the guy? Be the guy that 
proves everyone wrong and get it, take it off road. I saw something online saying a 350 engine is good for 300 miles, being essentially a van engine. I can potentially see that it'll last. Well, yeah, a 642 engine, I've personally seen at that miles, 200,000 miles, 300,000 miles. Yes, it didn't come without the bills along the way, uh, but yeah, they are good for it. If they're looked after properly, regular oil changes when it gets to that kind of miles. Not sure on this username, but I am torn between the C180 1.6 or 1.8 petrol. If you could answer which engine is better from your experience. Well, they're both the same, really. Um, I'm guessing it's the both a 271 engine. It's just about whether you want a bit more poke or not. If it's the engine I'm thinking of, 271 engines, common for timing chains and timing chain, timing sprockets wearing out something to think about uh, this is from Castrol GTX 5064 well deserved Sam would love to see the Q&A my question on the night would be did you buy the business from the previous owner or owners the plaque on the wall reads established 1996 you look very young compliment to have had the business nearly 30 years well that's good eyes where you've noticed the established 1996 sign yes Obviously, I have not worked here 30 years. I've worked here 20 years. I started working here straight from school. It was my stepdad's business, which I eventually bought off him. So, no, obviously, I did not open the garage. It was a family business, which um, I ended up buying. And here we are today. That could be a video in itself. That there's a, a lot that goes into where we are today. We're not. Uh, some, I think people, because we're new on YouTube, think we're a new company. We, we've been established for many, many years, and you can get an appointment next week. And it's not the case. Uh, this question's from Michael. I love the look of old MLs. Do you think they would make a good overland vehicle? Finding one in decent nick could be a challenge. Love the channel, keep up the great work. Cheers, Michael. The old original ML, I'd probably say is a better off-road vehicle because it's more basic, it's got less technology, and it's gonna be cheaper to fix if you smash it up. And we've done a video getting High Peak Mats ML500 back on the road. That's probably worth a watch for you, but I know I think the old MLs, more people use them for off-road than the newer ones. Down to earth guy, knows his stuff. Thanks, Eddie. Keep it real, yep. That's our intention. Just loads of really nice comments um, rather than questions. Thanks to everyone, by the way, who not only views, gives us a good comment, which encourages us to keep going. Really, really appreciate it. Without nice comments, we just wouldn't continue with it. Um, it's good to know that people are enjoying it and um, learning something or take away something from our video. Daniel Watts, what is your favorite Mercedes-Benz engine and why? M113, it's a V8 and it's really reliable. I think everybody knows that by now. I think I say that in most videos, don't I? M113, bulletproof, yeah. This from George, only recently joined, excellent content and deadpan humour. We get this uh, comment a lot, deadpan humour. Um, I suppose I've got a bit of a deadpan personality. I'm not very like, woo. Yeah, thanks George, we get that comment a lot. I think people are warming to my personality because it is what it is. Intermittent limp mode on a sprinter platform, luxury motorhome i'm really sorry mate i can't help you with that i um, glad you're enjoying the channel huh? leroy 110 has there ever been a problem that has defeated you that you've just given up on some horror stories from working on cars um yes i have turned away jobs before or have looked into jobs had to reach out to the customer and say look um, I've spent, for example, five hours on it. I've got nowhere. I don't want to charge you for five hours, but 
from going forward from this point, I'm going to have to charge you per hour. Are you willing to invest? And they've said no. So I've had to turn the job away, which obviously I've lost out. Um, and I suppose they've lost out because they've not had the car fixed, but I can't, you know, I, I am running a business and I have to be realistic about these things. Well, I, yeah, I've got a story actually. I had a job that I had in, thought I'd diagnosed it correctly, fitted some parts and it didn't fix the problem. And did all my testing again. I was kind of coming to a blank with it. I was getting the same results. Anyway, so I just held my hands up and said, look, I think with this job, you need to go to Mercedes. Um, I said, I could spend hours and hours on this. And basically Mercedes have more support than us. So if they come across a problem that they're stuck with, they can send all the vehicle information, all the diagnostic reports off to technical in Germany. They can analyze everything and they will get on the phone to that technician and guide him through some stuff to do. I don't have that luxury. I literally just have me and my brain and that's it. So quick story, I fitted some parts to this car. It didn't cure it. It was a new customer as well, so it didn't look good, but it is what it is. I was just dead honest with him. And I said, look, I think you need to take this to Mercedes. I think they're going to diagnose it just how I have, probably fit the same parts and they realise it's not that. Anyway, sure enough, that's what happened. Mercedes had that car for six months. It took six months to fix the car. So in that time, he had a higher car. And because it took six months to fix the car, they didn't even charge him. So, you know, I'd looked at that car for a day, realised I need to get out of this job because it's not straightforward. And they had it six months. So what hope in hell did I have? None. Has that, that has happened, it probably happens two, three times a year. So yeah, you could say that I've give up or it's defeated me, or you could say it just wasn't good business sense for me or the customer. I'm dead honest with customers. If I'm drawing a bit of a blank and I say, look, we need to fit this part, but I'm not sure, I'll just hold my hands up and say, let's try this, but it might not work. So yeah, I suppose I've been defeated before. That story, th that's happened more than once. Um, I've had cars in the dealership for months and months and months. And it, ma it makes me feel a bit better that I couldn't have done any more for a customer. As in, if they took it and the customer rang me and said, oh yeah, I went in and they had it done in two hours, all job done, I'd feel an absolute idiot. But when I get the stories back that they've had the car for so long to fix it, it does make me feel better. The Millennial Mank, what led you to head up to SPR Autos? What's SPR Autos history and how have you been able to grow the business and earn a glowing reputation without personally overseeing every little job? Well, the SPR Auto started in a tiny little garage in Macclesfield and then we moved here. The, the answer to that is the opposite to your question. Without personally overseeing every little job, I do oversee every little job. I am probably a nightmare to work for because I walk around the garage with the eyes in the back of my head, pulling people on things all day, every day. I stick my nose into every single job, which is probably really annoying. I wish I couldn't oversee every little job, but I can't help it. I am a nightmare. Uh, right, I think that comes to the end of the Q&A. Uh, hope everyone enjoyed something a bit different. I hope you've not fell asleep or bored to death. Like and subscribe and all that stuff. <laughs> I hate saying that. It's like you're begging it. Thanks for watching. See you on the next one.